Welcome to Haxby Shed, and odd jobs and stickers 13. It's late April here in the UK, but it's still stubbornly chilly, hence this jacket. Today I'm going to show you a couple of odd jobs, and then we'll look at four stickers. Now, two of those stickers we've, we've seen before, but I've got reason to mention them. Not least because one of those channels has sent me a very nice present which we're going to unbox. And then the other two channels are new to me, new stickers. So let's have a look at the odd jobs first and then we'll come back to the stickers and we'll show a bit of their video on the board here. Here's an odd job. Clarkson collet holder which takes this type of collets. Morse taper 3. Whoops! Countersink, Morse taper 2. Now I won't be using these with draw bars, that and that. So I'm going to make a tang for each. Just take a 3x UNC bolt, screw I should say, and just make a flat end to it and weld it on. Simple enough job hopefully. Well you know, even on the simplest jobs, simple isn't quite so simple. So I took one of these and I shortened it and I machined the head and it now screws onto here. And it looks quite nice and my plan was to just weld that piece on there like that see and that would make a nice tang but when i put it in this three to two sleeve this bit is contacting the sides here so it's hitting there before this taper locks so i'm just going to have to machine a little bit off the sides of this now, do I do it on the mill or do I do it on the shaper? That's an easy one, isn't it? We'll do it on the shaper. This sort of precision work is not very easy on a shaper, but it's just that I don't have the vertical head on my mill yet, so I'm kind of gambling it's quicker to set this up. It won't be as precise. It's just half a mil cut and I'm doing it by eye. I've put a line on it which I can nearly see. Well that took far too long. It would have been so much quicker on the mill. <laughs> just in case you didn't see the series, because I was certain I would never buy a milling machine, which of course I then did, I bought a one horsepower motor, new. I made this fitting to go on the bottom and a bracket. It takes an ER32 chuck. So there I've got a 12 mil carbide end mill in it. I made this bar here to lock the ram against the wall. I can adjust the distance of the ram to set the position. It's kind of approximate coming this way, you know, lining up by eye. But the other two dimensions going, the table going up and the table going across this way, uh, both have calibrated dials so with a certain level of accuracy I can do some reasonable milling on it and if my milling machine's out of commission which it kind of is for the reasons I said because I want to sort that head out then I can do small jobs like this so we'll finish these off on the shaper mill it's not super accurate but it should do this okay Okay. Well that's one side done. I'll swing it round 180. I'll have to zero it off again as you can see. But at least the two sides will be parallel. Adjustment in this direction is by pushing the ram. And then I lock the ram in the right place. Second side. So this cut will be 0.3 of a mil to give you an idea. I mean it does that very comfortably. It's not perfect, 
but it's pretty good. Actually, it is pretty good to say it was milled on a shaper. I think that's reasonably presentable, don't you? That's a lot better now. It was a bit marginal before. It locked, but it wasn't proper tight. I can tell now as I extract it. Good, so that's done. With this actually, all I need to do is take the corners off this nut because it will lock already. So I just need to trim it up. There we are. So that's another odd job done. Well, here's an odd job. I've got this handle on the gate and it always sticks in the winter. I've shaved it many, many times, but it always swells and sticks. And this winter pulling it shut, the handle broke. Now I'm just going to take it off and weld it back together. I could buy another, it wouldn't be expensive, but I'll guarantee that it didn't fit exactly. And then I'd have to change it and then I'd have to spend time on it. So it's just as easy to take it off and try and weld it. I've ground off a bit of rust and it's ready to take. Not great, but it'll do. Burnt it away a little bit, but not much. The plate's just about rusted through. I'll put a bit of black paint on it. Repaired, painted and back on. Looks like I'm going to have to paint the white gate this year. Maybe I can delay it for another year. Well, I hope you enjoyed the odd jobs. Nothing jobs, really. They don't deserve a video on their own, surely. But it's real life, so I thought I'd put them in. Anyway, the first channel up is EC Workshop. So that's Ed's channel. He's in Tennessee. He's a retired machinist. I think he's been retired about 12 years. He had to retire due to ill health, he told us on his channel. It's a bit of a lifestyle channel, so a little bit of all sorts on it, but including some machining. So, EC Workshop. You've probably seen his sticker around the place. He's quite good at putting stickers out, and he's got quite a good sticker board himself. So, Ed, we'll just put a bit of video up for you, and then we'll put the sticker on the board. DC's workshop. Uh, today is uh, another sticker board day. I don't know if it's six, seven, what sticker board video. But I got a few more stickers in. I got some from all the way from Australia. It's called the Swan Valley Machine Shop. That's pretty cool videos. I like it. YouTube. I enjoy watching them. He made a square here the other day using the shaper and a nail. Well, the next channel up is Aaron Engineering. He's in Victoria, Australia. He's got two channels, one for manual machining and one for CNC machining. He's got about 4,200 subscribers. That's the sticker for his manual machining. I think I can see a nice Colchester lathe there, Aaron. So we'll have a look at some of his video, very professionally produced. So you may remember a couple of weeks ago, um, I've got a customer called Wayne, and he's got these Coventry die heads that I can have uh, use of. So Wayne's dropped me off some steel, and we're gonna make two of these sleeves, one for my Colchester and one for Wayne's lathe down the track. Now I've thrown the longest billet that I had in the Colchester, and I just quickly OD turned and faced that just to get a good gripping surface uh, so it wouldn't pull out and hit me in the head. So today's operations are rather simple. Uh, basic lathe operations such as facing, uh, centre drilling, drilling and boring. So at the moment I'm taking a probably about a 10 thou cut on the external diameter here in the OD and you can see the carbide is really giving a nice finish. 
and uh, unfortunately I hit it again and didn't take a deep enough cut and, and, and that dulled that beautiful finish but look I kept up on the size so I knew I could uh, get back to that that surface finish later on in the video. Now in the envelope from Aaron he included a few spared stickers and I got another sticker for Kimber Zellick. Now Kimber's got about 800 subscribers now. Um, Kimber has a very natural style in his presentations and in his videos. Um, I like it. Now, why, do I, why am I mentioning it this time? Well, because this is a pink sticker, Kimber, and the other sticker you sent me was iridescent. Now, it's a bit like collecting football card sets. How many of these do I need to make the complete colour set? I'm not promising to put on any more on my board, but this one will go on as a second sticker for you. I like the pink. It's original thinking. It's great. Now the last channel up is Greg, my little mule. He's now got about 2,600 subscribers. Uh, he was one of my early stickers some time ago. He's in Ohio. The reason I'm mentioning it now is because he's the one who sent me this very nice present which we're going to open up and I'll share with you. So this package arrived, oh I don't know, a week ago, something like that. Uh, he contacted me about this item and said, you know, did I want one? And then it, it looked like it was going to be very expensive for him to, to send it. And I said, look, honestly, you know, don't spend that sort of money. But he managed to find a cheaper route for shipping. He didn't tell me how much it cost. Uh, I suspect more than I'd like him to pay. But even so, you know, here it is. So... His sticker has a car on it because one of his interests is jeeping, but he does plenty of machining. There's another one of his cards, look, there. Now we both have an interest in karate, I still do it, <laughs> badly. Um, he's a bit younger than me, but the, we're both creaking a bit, to be honest with you. I'm just about keeping it going. So, anyway, enough talk, let's have a look. I'm always interested in the packaging. It tells me a lot about things. You know, when Kimber sent me a package, um, his, his patch packaging, I think, was uh, Harbour Freight. This one is... I can't even say that word, folks. But it looks like groceries. I won't try and say that. Heinen's, maybe? But I'll still be looking at it, Greg. I'm interested. I like, I like to understand, you know, places and people and stuff. Okay. Bubble wrap, bubble wrap. I've got the shipping label. Yep. Okie dokie. Mm. I can't see how much you paid, but it was probably too much, you know. Box. Now we come to it. Look at this lovely patina. Right? Years and years and years of use. What do you think it is, folks? Let's have a look. Oh, I can't get the lid open. Hold on. There we go. It's got a calibration date. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, 4th of the 4th, 12, I think. Right. He's wrapped it very nicely in grease protection paper. And I think you can probably see already what it is. It's an Imperial depth micrometer but it look I hope this is going to focus it's mid to toyo mid to toyo well isn't that nice and it's got the logo on it and I'm going to have to check when they stopped putting the logos on because I haven't noticed logos on mid to toyo tools for a while so that might give me a clue as to its age and it's not yeah not to six inches so it's imperial and these are the rods. Now in case you've not seen, because I had not seen, I didn't know how this was going to work, this thimble at the back here comes off, the rod comes out, and you put in the longer rod. That's how it works. Now to you experienced machinists, that's kind of obvious, but it was new to me because a metric depth micrometer that I got had extender rods and you screwed one onto the end of the other. So that's a lovely piece, but not enough, really, that he sent me the set. He's also sent me 
quite a lot of end mills as well. So look at this beauty there. Thank you very much, Greg. What's that? That's uh, 15 sixteenths. And see what else he's put in here. He's got a countersink here, this type of. I hope that focuses, guys. I can't tell from here. A small countersink. Oh, brilliant. Look, a large countersink. It's like Christmas, only it's better than Christmas, isn't it? Some smaller end mills. Oh, and a roughing. Look, a roughing cutter end mill there. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, and more. I hope you're as, I hope you're as excited as I am. A double-ended three-eighths end mill, look. Wonderful. I just want to say th thank you very much, Greg. I think it's more than I could expect you to do. I, I, uh, I'm always surprised by the generosity of people. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. That's really appreciated. Let's get the stickers on the door. So there you are, Kimber. That's your bonus sticker. It just amuses me that you produce stickers in so many colours. Head sticker, Aaron sticker. If you would like to send me a sticker, I'd be delighted to put it on the board. Just email me at this address. And if you'd like one of my stickers, I'd be delighted to send it to you anywhere in the world where there's a postal service. Thanks for watching.